Hi right, guys, this is FRQ type 3 experimental design and analysis uh, for uh, AP Physics C mechanics. So let's get started. This is more about, you know, experiments and uh, graphing regressions and all. A group of students having two cards, card 1 and 2 of known mass M1 and M2 are respectively. The cards are placed on a straight horizontal track. The card 1 is given an initial velocity V0 towards the right. 2 is initially at rest, has a spring attached to it and da da da. Card, card 1 collides with card 2. Now, a group of students want to determine the relationship between V0, which is the, you know, the velocity with which the car, card 1 is traveling, and the fraction of kinetic energy remaining after the collision, after the collision, which is described to be the ratio of k total final over k total initial, um, where total is the total kinetic energy of 1 and 2 after the collision, and this is before the collision. Now, determine an experimental procedure to connect the data that would allow the students to determine if the initial speed of the cart one changes the ratio of this provide enough necessary detail. All right, so if we want to determine that if V naught changes this ratio, obviously we want to get these values at different values of V naught, right? So we are going to say um, that first off, we want to measure velocity, right? So velocity is measured and pos pos positions, velocities, all these things are measured using motion sensors. So first off, we're gonna say that uh, place motion sensors to find, to measure rather, to measure velocities, velocity of blocks before and after collision. Uh, next, we are going to say that push uh, cart one with some force to uh, uh, push cart one with some force and determine the initial and final values, the initial and final values uh initial and final value final velocities i would say velocities uh, the third experiment is repeat this repeat the above repeat this process repeat this process for different initial velocities different initial velocities All right i think this should be suffice this should suffice right uh, because uh, uh, we are measuring all that for different values of uh, uh, initial velocity and that's how we'll measure whether the ratio is changing or not, right? And the velocities will obviously give me the total energy, right? Uh, so fourth point, probably we can write that find kinetic energy using these velocities, all right? Uh, describe how the collected data should be analyzed to determine whether the value of V0 changes with time. So that's the same thing, right? Uh, we'll say that use respective mass of both blocks to determine initial and final kinetic energy. Uh, Find the ratio of Ke total final and Ke total initial for different uh, initial velocities and compare. And that's about it. If we compare these ratios, we can we can you know we can know if the ratio is changing. Then obviously change of V0 changes the ratio. If it is not changing, then it is not changing the ratio. Okay, in a later experiment, card one is placed at the bottom of a ramp and an impulse at the bottom of the ramp delivers an impulse to the cart one that is directed above the ramp by quickly releasing a burst of high pressure air. All right, the magnitude of the impulse delivered to the cart is same in all the trials and blocks of different masses, known masses can be attached to this cart. This is the block. 
Now the students are asked to determine the value of the impulse delivered to the block card system by an impulse device. The students measure the combined mass M1B of the card and block. Uh, the impulse device delivers the mass to the block card system and the students measure the maximum height attained by the block card system. It is repeated using blocks of different masses and the students measurements are shown over here. Indicate two quantities that when graphed produce a straight line that could be used to determine a numerical value for the impulse delivered. You may use blank columns in the table for any quantity. Okay. Uh, so first off, we know that the formula for impulse, uh, which is represented by J, is uh, uh, M times uh, delta V, right? Because the mass is not changing here. So the impulse J will be N, M times V2 minus V1. And V1 is zero because obviously there is no initial velocity. So it's just M times V2. Let's call just V2 as V. So it will be J is equal to MV. And remember that M is continuously changing. So we can divide both sides with mass. So this is how it looks like. So V is equal to one over MJ. So it makes sense that the graph should be between velocity and one over M. So obviously I need one over M1B as one of the column, right? Because that is my X. And this will also give me a straight line, like Y is equal to M, the slope will be J and X. But the question is how will we find the velocity? Because I don't have the velocity, I have the, uh, uh, the height. So actually we can do that. We can use the conservation of energy here because if the, it goes to a height of H and this goes with a velocity of V, then I can say that the mechanical energy uh, is conserved, which means that the initial total kinetic energy will be converted into mechanic uh, to potential energy, uh, MGH. So M and M is gone. So V square is equal to two GH, which means that V is equal to root two GH. This will be our y-axis uh, because that's what we have over here. So we also have to find square root of 2gh. Uh, I'll just, uh, g is of course 9.8. So let me just find all these values. So after filling everything up, this is how it looks like. So I just, uh, I hope you understand. I just plugged in h here, g we already know. And I took reciprocal of all the, uh, all the masses. Right, so vertical axis is going to be uh, V, where V is root 2GH. So vertical axis will be square root 2GH. And the horizontal axis is, of course, 1 over M1B. All right, now they're asking us to plot these. Okay, all right, we'll do that. I think first we need to determine an appropriate axis, right? Uh, I think I would like to take this uh, to this page over here. All right, so that I can see what I'm graphing. So I know this is my y-axis and it looks like if I take point uh, probably, how many marks do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Uh, it's going from uh, probably uh, three. Three divided by six is 0 0.5, right? I think 0 0.5 will make most sense. So I'm gonna put this as 0 0.5. This is one, this is 1.5, this is two, this is 2.5, this is three. And here we have uh, also 10, 10 over 6, 10 over 6 is about 1 point something, right? So let's take it as what, um, I think 2 is okay, let's take it by 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Actually, yeah, that works uh, uh, very well, yeah. All right. Uh, because in the horizontal direction, we have 5 blocks and in the vertical, we have 6 blocks. So that's why. All right, let's start plugging in the numbers first. We'll start with here because uh, the bottom up, from bottom to up, because these are small, uh, it's, you know, placed in decreasing order. So uh, the x-axis is two and the y-axis is 0 0.54. Uh, 0 0.54 is probably somewhere here. So let's mark this. Uh, then we have 2.85 and 0 0.83. 2.8 is like three is here. So 2.8 is, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe somewhere around here, right? So this is 2.8 uh, or something. So 2.8 and uh, about 2.9, okay, yeah, 2.9 and 0 0.83. 0 0.83 will be very close to here, I think, if I'm not wrong. So this will be the other point. Then I have 4 and 1.17. So 4 and 1.17 is about 1.2 around. 
So 1.2 is somewhere over here. So this is about 1.2. And then I have 6.67 and 1.77. So 6.6 .6 is about 6.7 kind of. Uh, this is 7. Uh, this is 6.5 of course. So 6.7 is kind of in between. So let's take this as 6.7. And 1.77 is uh, about 1.8. So 1.6, 1.7, 1.8. So there you go. This one should be um, the other one. And the last one is 10 comma 2.78 2.6 2.7 2.78 is about 2.8 so there you go and they also want us to draw a straight line so we'll do that um, let's try to draw a regression line uh, probably something like this uh, i mean yeah not bad uh, yeah this is how the regression line is going to look right uh, finally, we need to find the slope of this to find the uh, um, to find the impulse, and we already concluded that our slope is indeed uh, j, right? Because this is y, this is x, and this is n. So y is equal to m x kind of. So this slope is nothing but the impulse. So let's see. Uh, for the slope, we just take any two points that are nicely intersecting the grids. Uh, probably I'll take this as the as first point. I think this point is 3 point, uh, 2.24. Uh, okay, no, 3, 2. So each marking is 2.4, 2.8, 3.2, 3.6. So this is 3.6 comma. And uh, of course, this is 1. So this is 1 point. And probably this one over here, I'll take this one as the other point. This is also a nice grid intersection. So y coordinate is of course two, uh, and the x coordinate is right here, which is six point four, six point eight, and seven point two. So seven point two is over here. So what is the slope between uh, uh, these two? So that's going to be y two minus y one. The points are three point six comma one, three point six comma one, and seven point two comma two. So the slope or which will also be equal to j is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which comes out as uh, 0 0.2777. So 0 0.278 and the unit of uh, uh, impulse is kilogram meter per second. So that is the answer.